Hi, this is Coco with BlackFilm.com. We're here with Asia, Naomi Queen, and Ifra Ahmed. And we're here to discuss the incredibly moving story of Ifra Ahmed and her film, A Girl from Mogadishu. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having us. It's, it's definitely an Thank honor you. to conduct this interview today. I'm really happy to sit with you all. Um, I'll start with you, Ifra. Since this is the story about your life, and your mission to empower and save young girls from the cultural practice of female genital mutilation. How prevalent is this practice in Somalia or even in the world? And, and what is it exactly? Um, thank you so much for having us, as Asia said. Um, really, uh, female genital mutilation is practiced in Somalia 98%, and it's age zero to age 15, young girls are cut. Uh, if we talk about the, around the world, it's about um, 30 countries do practice Africa and Middle East. And um, Somalia basically is one of the highest countries where FGM is practiced. But uh, every year around the world, today, 200 million women worldwide are living with the consort of female genital mutilation. Every year, 1 million young girls are at risk on cutting on FGM. It's, it's just cultural practice. It has no uh, medical issues. It has no, um, you know, you talk about Islam and all that, but it has no place in Islam. And if I just talk a little bit, what it is, a uh, female cutting is actually, um, it always is very hard for me to explain, but uh, it's actually, people say it's type one and two and three, is a removal, a total clitory and, um, you know, make the youngest injured and it can cause bleeding and also it cause death. So um, FGM is that, I cannot go into deep because it's you not, know, people know, but um, it's actually cultural practice and it has no religion in place. Okay, I think that's important to note that it's not necessarily a religious thing, it's cultural, so that, that there's a difference there. And Asia, I wanted to ask you, were you familiar with FGM before you took on this role and was it a key factor in why you joined the cast? So, I mean, I was vaguely familiar with um, FGM, um, but it was like, you know, it was like this idea of something that happens far, far away that I never had to really be confronted with. and getting to know Ifra and learning about her story, it gave me such insight as to like the, just just the the, her, the the horror of this cultural practice and the fact that it still continues today and, and how many brave women like Ifra herself are on the front lines fighting against it. And it was, it was really Ifra that made me want to, to play her of course, because she's such an incredible woman. She is, she is. Um, yes. And if it, because your story is one of true heroism and, and bravery, you know, and, and not, none of us take that lightly. What made you decide that this journey to end FGM was not just about you? Um, even after being granted asylum in Ireland, you still returned to Somalia to save and educate others. It became bigger than your own mission. What made you decide to be that voice for everyone? Well, you know, when I came to Ireland, it was very, um, legal because everyone could practice though even there was a little fight on fgm in ireland but young girls who were born and raised in ireland are still at risk on female genital mutilation and if we look at around the world we say that uh, the leaders everyone will know is what uh, hiv aids is but if you look at nobody knows what female genital mutilation is and female genital mutilation is worse than cancer is a killer itself so um, what made me to join is that I was given a voice in Ireland when I became a refugee and I told my voice going to Europe and raising that voice in the European level, I could take to Somalia and do the same. Even if I saved one young girl's life, I, I saved a lot and I, that's what made me decide to go back and I believe that still if I save one girl's life, I have done such amazing work and I will continue till FGM and Somalia and around the world. And with the biopic, it's really important to understand the path that the person you're portraying has traveled with a girl from Mogadishu. It's not a casual body of work. Asia, I'll ask you, how did you both come together to make sure that Ifra's story was honored properly? And how difficult was it to prepare for the role? 
Well, so in terms of making sure that if the story was properly honored, I must say that the director, Mary McGuckian, did an amazing job um, because she wrote the script as well. And she t took that script directly from Ifra's testimony. And the other thing that made sure it was properly honored was Ifra was there every single day. <laughs> So there was no way there was going to be a single detail that that wouldn't be exactly exactly accurate to the community that she came from. Like even when we were creating like just these different camps, like if it was making sure every single detail was exact, which which was perfect and wonderful. And um, for me, in terms of like really being able to get into this role. Ifra was again, I mean, she's the driving force of this whole thing. She was kind enough to always make herself available to me from translating Somalian to giving me correct pronunciation of things and just giving me such insight into her life and, and her story and what drives her. So like, so she was my, my source book right there. And I, I got to have her with me every day throughout the process. I see a, a, a kinship and a, and a sisterhood with you two, or just, you know, just, you just naturally just, there's just something there that I see that's just bigger than, than playing a role. So I say that to say that when I was just trying to understand, uh, you know, looking at Ifra's, uh, her, the, her history and just what she's been through and really just understanding who you are as a person, Asia, I noticed that there are some really strong parallels just prior to even the role between the two of you. And I see that with social media was, was really huge for Ifra to get her message out there. But I noticed that you too, Asia, you use your social media just beyond promoting just works or just beyond anything light. You really use it to, to, to be a voice for the young people. Um, were you drawn to this role because of your own activism? I mean, like I, I deeply value and believe that each and every one of us needs to stand up and speak out against the many injustices that so many people, especially people of color, especially women, are facing on a daily basis. And we have to use whatever means possible to be able to do that. But in terms of being really drawn to this role, it's IFRA's activism because like, yes, I may be going to a march or, or posting on social media, but like IFRA is on the front lines. She's on the ground. She's in the communities. She is talking to world leaders about making tremendous changes for, for women and girls that are being impacted the world over. And, and really, the first time I met IFRA, I was so nervous. But I mean, as you can see, she is so bubbly and wonderful and joyful. And I, I didn't know what to expect. And I wasn't expecting such such a light, such a presence to walk into the room. And there she was. And I will never forget that she said to me, and this is, it's weird to quote you to you, if, but but this this is the thing that that for me just spoke so clearly as to why she does what she does and and how much it it means and what truly matters but she said to me my life means nothing but if i can stop this from happening to just one girl then my life will mean something and like it's that 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 the essence of that that is the essence of who she is and that's what makes her so remarkable and what makes me so honored that I had the chance to be as close to her during that process and portray her and her journey. Um, I, I had a question for you, Ifra, regarding uh, the practice. With so many women able to painfully relive the experience that they had to go through as youth, why do women still culturally believe that this practice is necessary in some instances for their children as well, knowing what it did to them or made how it made them feel? Asia, thank you, so, thank you so, thank you so much for the lovely comment. And I still remember every step of making the movie, being around you, and how warm and you know amazing you are. You're just an amazing woman, and I hope you you know every every happiness that you deserve. So, um. Mothers knowing that this happened to them, for them it's saying that, yes, it happened to me and she has to feel the pain. That is something mostly I hear from the community saying that it happened to me and she has to, she has to go through. And that it makes me really angry because 
mother feeling so much pain in deep and she's saying that yeah this has happened to me and it has to happen to my daughter that is really unacceptable and that is something in my head i cannot really understand mother who has a three girls or four girls and allowing their daughters to go through all the pain she faced female genital mutilation as it that has a bleeding has a kidney failure has a lot of different infections mother who face all those consequences is still thinking that my daughter have to face the same it's actually um, unreal and is is education that we need to bring it into the community thank you and not everyone agrees with your mission to save these young girls and in the movie as um asia portrayed we see you threaten to stay silent do the threats ever dissuade you from continuing to speak out yeah i mean like um for me like going back to somalia i have to be more uh knowing who i deal with knowing where i go and who i associate because it is a risk every step you take is a risk in somalia it's not only because of speaking out female genital mutilation but life in general somalia been war over 30 years and the problem is still there especially they see me as a young you know western brainwash come back to the country so it is really a risk i take that risk because as asia said my life is nothing if i can save one girl's life that is the reason i take this step back to somalia and i remember when i became when i get my passport uh, unhcr they advised me not to go to somalia as it was one of the you know uh, the red line not to go but i made that choice to return back to somalia five years ago and i still believe that uh, my voice it needs to be there and raise the way thank you and asia has your involvement with the film exposed you to them with um, similar criticisms uh no no i've been very very lucky in that way but i'm not the i'm not the face of it you know i'm it's when you look to the face of this you see ifrak med and jaha dukre and like and these incredible women who who make it so outwardly known that they are against it and that they believe in a zero tolerance policy in terms of fgm and like and that is of course going to well, ruffle a lot of feathers to say the least but like again like for me i'm i get to be a world away i'm living in the us and you know and i don't have to face it the same way she does when she's back in somalia on the ground mm -hmm. and i'll ask the both of you what should the audience take away from a girl from mogadishu well, i think i mean i take so much away from it i i take so much away from the experience of it and from knowing it for intimately and and i hope i did her justice in showing her joy it was just no matter what she had gone through no matter what experience she had had she carried such joy and light with her everywhere she goes and there is just something to this idea that suppressing your experiences won't feed you like you you must use your voice outwardly to not only heal yourself but heal others as well any fear um you know even in america they are your neighbors they are your friends they are your children friends who are at risk today on the female genital mutilation and i can say that america can get involved supporting any campaign of female genital mutilation whether it's in America, whether it's outside America, because we are talking about your neighbors, we are talking about your friends, we are talking about your sister. I wanted to ask you, what can people who are interested in helping the IFRA organization, um, how can they educate themselves and assist in amplifying your cause? Is there any way from the US that one can donate to the IFRA organization? Yeah, we have an IFRA foundation. Uh, I think Leone already sent, if not, we will email you but we have a uh, we are on twitter on ifra foundation and we also on facebook and then on instagram and we have a website for the foundation and anybody can donate there i always say that you know tesco says every little helps everything helps and counts and i think not only money that supports me but also your voice you know amplifying the voices on social media especially at the moment because of the coronavirus has increased the cutting for the young girls and it's been really dramatically uh, highly increased in Somalia and around other african countries girls are still cutting 
and it's still at risk. So everyone can make a difference. Sharing even is, a, you know, making difference. Talking about the movie, you know, media actually amplifies our work. So there is a many different ways can everyone can get involved and in amplifying our work. Thank you. And what has been your, your takeaway from this experience and, and what's next for you? Uh, my, well, say, my takeaway from this really is just what a generous human being Ifra is and how we, we can all embody that and amplify that, that kind of generosity and love of ourselves and, and for people that we know may be going through similar experiences. Um, I love how fiercely she wants to protect all women. Um, and like, yeah, it's like just, just knowing her heart warms me and I'm very grateful that, that I've gotten to know her in this way. Um, and then next for me, you know, post pandemic, when that day may come, you don't know. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I do have two films that should be coming out later this year. Um, the 24th, which stars Trey Byers, you might remember him from Empire, mm -hmm. um, and Sylvie's Love, which is with Tessa Thompson. Um, and so, yeah, those are also very excellent films. One just kind of demonstrating black joy and black love and the other talking about um, uh, this, tr this black troop in uh, World War I uh, at Camp Logan, Texas and the riot that occurred there. So getting into black uprising as well. And I mean, and I guess in the midst of all of this, we are seeing what, we are seeing how beautiful black uprising is which I am utterly grateful for the world over. Like everyone I think has really stood in arms to, to shout Black Lives Matter. And so that has been so valuable. And, and people like Ifra have been on the front of that, like her life matters, the life of these women matter. And we have to not only talk about, you know, Black people in the US, but Black people the world over and stand up for them. I, I just have to say that you both have accomplished something so brave, so moving, and so selfless. Again, even as I see how you all interact with each other in such a loving way, it just it just warm, warms the heart. And I know that there's a sincerity there that you know you don't always see. But just the dialogue here has just been just so enriching, and it's been educational. So I really appreciate you all. And I wanted to say that you all show that, again, there is strength in using your voice, and that is a true testament to the power of, of having a platform and not just saying anything, but saying things of substance and just really making sure that, you know, uh, what you put out there is, is important to all. So I thank you both for, for teaching me something, you know, <laughs> for definitely teaching me something. And, uh, oh, I, I wanted to tell you, Ifa, you know, I'm East African too. I'm a, I'm a neighbor. I'm, I'm Tanzanian. <laughs> oh, I'm a little far. It's a little dry, but I'm from Tanzania. <laughs> Tanzania. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. But don't ask me to speak Swahili. I, you know, you me. <laughs> but um, I, I, I thank you both so much. Um, thanks for, for allowing me the honor to speak to you and for having such a positive dialogue and, and thank you for joining us on BlackFilm.com. We are here with Naomi King and Ifa Ahmed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you. I'm taking pictures. Okay. <laughs>